Welcome to another edition of Hours and Minutes, where we take hours of information and squeeze it into a few palatable minutes. With me today, we have Chris Hooper. Chris is BUI's chief underwriter and an absolute wealth of knowledge with all things related to life insurance underwriting. Chris, today we are talking about diabetes, also known as the sugar. So I think, uh, I think a lot of times when people think or hear diabetes, they automatically default to type 2 diabetes. Can you take a quick moment and just draw the distinction between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Sure. Um, type 1 diabetes and what is when the body does not have any insulin. And so it is treated with insulin being injected into the body. It's usually diagnosed uh, earlier in life. Type 2 diabetes, uh, there's a limited amount being created or there's an intolerance to the insulin. And it's usually treated with an oral medication such as metformin usually develops uh, later on in life. And from an underwriting perspective, there is a, a big difference between underwriting type 1 and type 2, correct? Yes, there is. Uh, we predominantly see type 2 diabetes here in the USA. Yeah, so since we see that most often, let's go down that path and talk about type 2. From an, an insurance carrier underwriter perspective, what is sort of the ideal scenario that they want to see in a proposed insured who has uh, medical has uh, type two diabetes in their medical history. Ideal scenario. Well, uh, the primary things that they look at is the age at onset. Uh, the later in life, the better. The uh, severity, and they measure that by the extent of control, usually with blood work, um, and then also if there's any complications. And then finally, they look at the cardiovascular risk profile because type 2 diabetes, the risk there is having a uh, disposition for a future cardiac event. So, um, you know, a great candidate would be somebody that, you know, is, is age and onset later on in life after age 50, uh, has excellent control. Um, maybe the A1C, which is a lab result that they refer to quite a bit, is, is favorable for some time. Uh, no complications, and then the overall cardiovascular risk profile is favorable as well. So uh, no smoking, um, no heart disease, no vascular disease, uh, good cholesterol, good blood pressure, good height and weight, so on. You said A1C, so typically somebody who has a history of diabetes will, will likely know their A1C. What level uh, is kind of the maximum that an advisor would want to hear to, to think a client would likely be insurable? Yeah, the hemoglobin A1C uh, is showing an average, if you will, over the past um, you know, weeks, depending on metabolism, of where the blood sugar is at. And so the lower the better. Um, somebody who doesn't have diabetes, you'd usually see the A1C under a 5.8 or a 6.0. Somebody who has diabetes, um, if the A1C is in the sixes, that's usually going to show excellent control. If the A1C is in the sevens, controlled. Uh, if the A1C is over the eight, then suboptimal control. And then when we get to the double digits, we're, we're probably looking at an uninsurable in those situations. Got it. Okay. So let's say you have somebody who was maybe recently diagnosed and went through life insurance underwriting, didn't get the most favorable rate because uh, maybe they were, uh, their diet wasn't where they it should have been at the time. And uh, maybe they're heavier than they should be. And they've gotten things under control. Is is there an opportunity to reapply uh, and get a more favorable rate in the future? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we help out with this all the time. You know, the underwriting decision is just a certain uh, picture in time, right? And so that profile, if you will, can change. So in a situation where somebody was maybe recently diagnosed or maybe they found out by applying for life insurance, there's definitely an opportunity down the road if, you know, when um, the complications go away, uh, when the A1C and, and other factors to show control uh, are, uh, you know, demonstrated as better, as well as the cardiovascular things as well, um, cholesterol, blood pressure, height and weight. Uh, you know, many of those things are, are in the power, if you will, or sometimes in the power of the uh, individual to make adjustments to. Some things aren't, you know, uh, a... Uh, a heart attack that occurred is not going to go away, but subsequent cardiac evaluations that show, um, you know, an improvement and that everything is stable can be helpful. So those are the sort of things that uh, we help out on on a regular basis to, to help people get a better deal, uh, perhaps than what they got in the past. Got it. And so a well-controlled diabetic, 
who's uh, healthy and uh, is eating right and A1C is, is where it should be might get a rate class as good as standard? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we even frequently see standard plus non-nicotine, which is, as you know, a, a little bit better. There are some taser rates out there that uh, in the perfect situation, you can even get to preferred, uh, but then you have to look at the pricing, of course, and compare that to, uh, you know, what the pricing at a standard plus is. The yeah. majority of folks that we see with type 2 diabetes usually land in the table 2 category, and then you see a lot of standard, standard pluses, and then you see a lot of, obviously, the other way. Yep, got it. Well, Chris, once again, super helpful information. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, for anyone who is viewing, if you have other questions that you'd like to see addressed on hours and minutes, please email marketing at buiusa.com.